It is a story that takes place when I am actually doing my tasmiya, my recitation rather, to uh, get ready for my ijaza exam. And in this case, it was for the Qira al Warish. Um, in Damascus, the way the setup was for get, receiving your ijaza in Quran is you have to recite to your teacher, then your teacher takes you to their teacher, that teacher takes you to their teacher, <laughs> until you reach the final, basically the top muqri'een of, uh, of Damascus, which were five, and you had to recite to one of the five in order to actually receive your ijaza that had the official khatim from Wazarat al-Awqaf of Damascus. It's a very rigorous process. And so here I am reciting to my teacher's teacher's teacher, <laughs> and I'm getting ready, just about ready, to go to the sheikh and recite. So I've prepared for some time, and I'm sitting there reciting to her, and it's her heba, her presence, her, the vibes, mashallah, this amazing person. Despite all of my studies, all I could get myself to read was <laughs> And so she, she said, Rania, Rania, Rania. <laughs> you know, take a break. I said, okay, I was so embarrassed, mashallah. She said, take a break. And then she decided to like calm me, this beautiful story, mashallah. She decided to calm me down by telling me a story. And she said, do you know my story? I thought, you're a giant, <laughs> mashallah. And she said, no, 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 no. I am also a professor of mathematics at the University of Damascus. And I have been, and since the 70s, the only female faculty member. And she said, did you know? I wasn't always a sheikha. I wasn't always a muqri'a jami'a. She had all 10 recitations completed in ijaz on all of them. And she said, I wasn't always this person. In fact, I came to Islam late. I thought, came to Islam late? <laughs> Mashallah. And then she said, when the wave of feminism hit Damascus, so many of us were taken by it. We all took off our hijabs and we all, you know. And she said, I just was raised in a family that wasn't at all religious. So it's not like she took off her hijab. She just was raised in a family that wasn't religious. And I thought to myself, I can do what any man does. And I'm going to study the most complicated thing. And so she chose mathematics. She said, one day, the girls of the college came up to me and said, we want to have, uh, there's very few women on campus. We want to have a women's gathering, a woman's uh, talk about, you know, being a woman on campus. So she said, yes, anything for women. So she met with them. She said, I'm very busy as a professor, but she went ahead and met with them. And so she's sitting in this circle of women. So here we are at first, the discussion is just going on about academics and being a woman and how difficult it is and so on in education. This is, this discussion is back in the 70s. And she said, I don't know when the conversation switched from the discussion of academics to the discussion of the Prophet Muhammad I don't even, because if somebody had told me they were going to discuss the Prophet وسلم, I would never have showed up. I was so closed off to this idea. But as they were talking, she said suddenly something hit my heart and it just opened. This heart that had been so close to anything related to religion, to Islam, to the Prophet, anything, was so closed off. And when Hidayah is meant to come, the moment and how and the, on the tongue of whom it comes with, Allah Ta'ala Alam. And it just opened. And she said, there I was, suddenly I was hit with this wave of love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I found myself listening intently. <laughs> and then I realized, wait a second, this group is almost all hijabis. <laughs> and she said, and do you know what I was wearing that day? And this is where the real, the real crux of the story is. I said, Yanni, what could you possibly be wearing? She said, mini skirt. Then I said, what? <laughs> so in English, she repeats again, mini skirt. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, it showed on my face. I was just... And she said, you know, Yaranya, if the woman had judged me for how I looked, I never would have entered into that room. If they judged me for who, on my, just what my outside was, I never would have been invited in to study the deen. If they had judged me and said, ah, she's one of those women, she's one of those feminist, uh, I don't know what women, right? I would never have begun this journey. And there I was, fully welcomed by this group. And one thing led to another, one halaqa led to another, one teacher led to another, and that brilliance that she took to get a doctorate in mathematics at a time when no other woman had a doctorate in mathematics, imagine putting that brilliance 
into the memorization of Qur'an. She became so learned in Qur'an and so accurate in all of her pronunciation that the shaykh, the head shaykh that we receive ijazah from, rahimahullah and rahimahullah, both of them, subhanAllah, that when he would travel to go on hajj, even though he had hundreds of students, hundreds of male students underneath him, he would choose her in his post to fill in for him, to give ijazah on his behalf when, she was, when he would travel. That's how qualified she was. And she said, had they judged me, had they looked at me and said, oh, you can't enter the masjid like that, sister, here's a blanket. <laughs> I'm being very serious. I tell this story to you because it really resonates with me. And it resonates the kind of woman that I studied with. And it resonates that anybody, this deen is for everybody. This deen is accessible to men and to women. This deen is accessible to your daughters. This deen, I'm talking to the women and to the men. <laughs> it is accessible to your sons. It is accessible to kids like me who grew up in America. 